free AI generated nudes sounds kind of like, you know, the start of some spam email, right? Right. But what if I told you this is like the latest bait being used by FI and seven and they're not exactly, you know, amateurs. We're going to deep dive into this whole thing. Uh, there's a Forbes article by Davey Winder that really digs into this new tactic. Hmm. And, and trust me, it's way more intense than it sounds on the surface. Yeah. What's really fascinating here is that, you know, we're not talking about some small time operation with FIN7. Yeah. They've been a serious problem, like a real thorn in the side of huge companies since, gosh, at least 2013, right? Right. Known for those massive ransomware attacks and even getting into that whole ransomware as a service thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Basically, they were like the arms dealers of cybercrime, selling the tools, you know, to other bad actors. So we're talking about major players in the cybercrime world. Absolutely. Yeah. Which makes you wonder, right? I mean, why would they risk like their reputation for something that seems kind of, I don't know, almost like a cheap trick? Right. Right. It all comes down to this idea of the honeypot, you know, that classic tactic of using something really appealing to lure in while unsuspecting victims. Right. And in this case, they're tapping into all that buzz around AI. And let's face it, people's uh, weakness for anything free, especially when it's a little, you know, titillating. So walk me through how this actually works. How does this whole, as Boinder calls it this deep fake porn honeypot actually play out. Okay, so FIN7, they've actually set up multiple websites and they look totally legit, like they're legit AI image generators, mm. all promising, of course, to create, you know, custom nude images. They've even gone so far as to use the name Deep Nude, which was that controversial app that got shut down a while back. Um, Remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're really playing on people's, I guess, desires, but also maybe some assumptions. Like they see that name and think, oh, maybe this is back online. Exactly. They're counting on that familiarity and they reel you in in a couple of ways. The simplest version, you click a link, right? Seems harmless enough. And boom, you download malware. It's disguised as, you guessed it, the AI generator. Classic bait and switch. Exactly. But it gets even, well, more interesting. They have a more, I guess you could say, sophisticated version of the scam. Oh, boy. I'm almost afraid to ask. Okay, so picture this. They offer a free trial. You upload an image, maybe it's a celebrity or even riskier, someone you know. Okay, I think I see where this is going. Yeah, so you hit download, you're all excited to see the results, right? And bam, pop up. But it seems harmless enough. It says, hey, this download is for like personal use only. Just agree to the terms and you're good to go. Right. Totally innocent. Except not really. So what are they actually agreeing to download at that point? Well, what they don't know is hidden inside this like harmless looking zip file is a really nasty piece of malware. It's called Luma Stealer. And we're not just talking about some annoying adware here. This is this is bad news, like a full blown info stealer. It can wreak havoc on your digital life. OK, info stealer. That yeah. sounds ominous. But break that down. What exactly can Luma Stealer do? Think of it like this. Imagine a digital pickpocket. But this one works silently in the background, right? So it can track everything you type, every keystroke, passwords, credit card numbers. It's all up for grabs. And it gets worse. It's not just what you're typing in that moment. It can also dig through your browser history, you know, those save logins you have, even password managers to snatch any sensitive info it can find. So even if you're using a password manager, you're not necessarily safe. You got it. And that's the thing, the implications here, they go way beyond just, you know, seeing some fake nudes. You're potentially handing over the keys to your entire online life. Yeah, we're not talking about just losing your social media accounts. This is serious stuff. Yeah, it goes way beyond that. Like, think about what those passwords actually protect, right? Right. Your online banking, email, I mean, even work accounts sometimes. Imagine the damage if someone got access to all that. Okay, yeah. It's a pretty terrifying <laughs> thought. But we're talking about FIN7 here, a group that's known for, you know, hitting up big companies, going after the big money. Yeah. So why the shift to something that feels, I don't know, almost like small time scamming? Right. Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And this is where things get really interesting if we try to figure out the why of it all, you know? Yeah. So remember, FIN7, their main thing, their bread and butter was ransomware. Right. Locking up a company's entire system and then demanding a huge ransom to unlock it. Yeah. But the thing is, law enforcement is catching up and cybersecurity pros are getting better at fighting back against these ransomware attacks. So this new tactic... It's almost like a way for them to diversify, right? Exactly. If one way of making money gets too risky or just less profitable. Yeah, they've got this whole other scheme ready to go. 
And this deep fake tactic, it's really insidious mm -hmm. because it's not just about one big payout. They're going after, you know, logins and data from potentially thousands of people. Oh, wow. And that stuff, that can be just as valuable, if not more so, on the dark web. Yeah, I mean, it's like they're casting this wide net yeah. to see what they can pull in. Exactly. And think about the psychology of it, too. A lot mm -hmm. of people, they might be more likely to fall for a scam that's offering something, you know, pleasurable, even if they would never, ever fall for a more traditional phishing email. It's a totally different kind of vulnerability they're tapping into. So it's not just about the tech. It's about, like you said, psychology. Absolutely. And I think this is a really important reminder that the threats out there are constantly evolving. FIN7, what they're doing is a perfect example of how these cyber criminals are getting smarter, more cunning, more in tune with, well, our desires and our vulnerabilities, I guess. It makes you wonder, what can we as, you know, everyday Internet users mm -hmm. even do to protect ourselves, especially the things changing so quickly? You're asking the right questions. Awareness, honestly, is half the battle. First and foremost, you got to trust your gut. If something online, any kind of offer sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Whether it's, you know, free AI generated content, some amazing investment opportunity, right. anything like that. If it sets off alarm bells, trust that instinct. It's easy to say that, but sometimes these scams are really convincing. Oh, absolutely. That's why it's so important to be really cautious about downloading anything, especially from a source you don't recognize. Scrutinize those website addresses, you know? Look for any misspellings, weird domain extensions, and be really careful with those pop-ups asking you to download something. So basically, a healthy dose of skepticism is always a good thing when you're online. Exactly. And don't underestimate the basics. Strong, unique passwords are a must, and enable that two-factor authentication whenever you can. I know it can be a pain, but that extra layer of security really can make all the difference. Right. Think of it like, I don't know, locking your front door, even if you live in a safe neighborhood. That's a good analogy. Yeah. And speaking of passwords, you mentioned earlier that even those password managers aren't foolproof. What else can we do on that front to be extra safe? You're right. A password manager is only as good as the master password protecting it. And even then, there are still vulnerabilities. One thing you can do is choose a manager that offers multi-factor authentication. So even if someone gets your master password, they still can't get in without that extra step. Exactly. Another good tip is for your most sensitive passwords, like your bank accounts or your primary email, don't even put those in your password manager. Oh, interesting. It's less convenient, sure. But for those super important accounts, honestly, consider a good old-fashioned written record, tucked away safely offline, of course. That's a good point. Sometimes the low-tech solutions are the most secure. It seems like this whole FIN7 situation, it's a reminder that these threats, they can be sneaky. Yeah. They can come disguised as something we actually want. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. And the methods they're using, that social engineering, that way of exploiting our desires, it can be used with all kinds of tempting offers, right? right. It, it goes way beyond just AI images. It's about being aware, being cautious, really, in all your online interactions. So it's not just about protecting your data. It's about protecting yourself. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, we talk about cybersecurity and we imagine, you know, firewalls, antivirus software. Right. But this whole FIN7 thing, it really shows you how it's, well, it's us. It's humans. Our own desires, our vulnerabilities, that's what they're using against us. Yeah, it's like that saying, right? The weakest link in the chain is usually the human one. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so unsettling about all this. It makes you wonder if this is a sign of things to come. If a group like FIN7, I mean, these guys are known for their complex, you know, ransomware attacks. Right. And they're resorting to these kinds of tactics. What does that tell us about, well, the future of cybercrime in general? Yeah, it's a little unnerving when you put it like that. Yeah. So are we going to see more of this, more cyber criminals shifting away from those big organizations and instead, I don't know, focusing on individuals uh, using these, what you call them, more accessible attacks with social engineering and all that? It's definitely possible. Think about it. Targeting individuals, it might be, well, less risky in some ways mm -hmm. and maybe even more profitable over time. Mm -hmm. Why go after one big target when you can cast a wide net, right? Right. And end up with tons of smaller catches, each one with a whole bunch of valuable data. And those nets, they're just going to get bigger, more sophisticated as AI and everything else advances. It's like we're entering this 
I don't know, a new age of cybercrime. Yeah. One that's more, well, personalized, more insidious, harder to protect against. Exactly. And that's what makes, you know, conversations like this so important. It's not just about FIM7 or even AI generated images. It's about recognizing that the threat is constantly changing. These cyber criminals are always adapting, figuring out new ways to, well, exploit our weaknesses, whatever those weaknesses may be. So where does that leave us? Yeah. What can we do besides just, like you said, being super vigilant, skeptical? How can we try to stay ahead in a landscape that's constantly shifting? You know, it might sound kind of cliche, but knowledge really is power. Stay informed. Read up on the latest scams, the latest threats, even if they sound, I don't know, kind of out there, far-fetched. Right. Cybersecurity. It's not just about reacting after some big attack makes the news. It's about developing that mindset, a little healthy paranoia, you know, in all your online interactions. So we need to become like amateur detectives in our own digital lives, yeah. always questioning, verifying, looking for those red flags. Exactly. And remember, it's not just about protecting your data. It's bigger than that. It's about protecting yourself, your identity, your livelihood. It's a constant back and forth, you know, a cat and mouse game, but it's one we can't afford to ignore. Well said. And on that note, that's going to wrap up this deep dive into the world of AI deepfakes and the, well, increasingly creative tactics of cyber criminals. Remember, everyone, stay informed, stay vigilant, and stay safe out there.